<laughs> yeah. Hi, everyone. Today, I'm going to be talking with Timur Protsky, who heads up the Archetype Center, which is a very successful um, organization and YouTube channel based in Kaliningrad, Russia, a very well-known exclave of Russia. Um, put you on the most... Um, so probably the most the most western part of Russia that exists, yes. right, Timur? Yes, and sort of separated by uh, Lithuania and Poland, um, and yes, yeah, so we're just discussing a bit about methodologies, about how the WSS methodology is different to that of the Archetype Center, and some of different different differences, for instance, with the using of psycho yoga alongside socionics, something we don't do, but the Arctic Center does. So I think it'll be an interesting and rich discussion on those differences, comparing and contrasting. So Timur, how are you today? What's new? I'm quite fine. I was preparing for the stream. I thought about your questions that you have sent to me. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Um, just, just to warm up, uh, could you just tell us a little bit about just how socionics has developed in Kaliningrad and how is it different there compared to say in main Russia? Well it all started for me in 2010, nine years ago. Mm. I was a bit experienced in socionics for that time but I was practicing for my own. I was only like an amateur mm. because I got acquainted with socionics in 2006. It was 13 years ago and I started it by myself. I read all the books that uh, could be found on the internet. I read forums like everyone else. Mm -hmm. and, and one time I met uh, people here in Kaliningrad that were also interested in socionics and we started a local club, socionical. Mm -hmm. We held meetings, we held um, uh, teachings, uh, we gathered people, we held courses. Uh, later we began going into the internet, uh, we began traveling uh, around Russia, Ukraine, mm. Belarus. Uh, we traveled to various uh, cities, met with people who are interested in socionics. Mm. And um, for the first uh, period, we used the methodology that was uh, proposed by uh, former Kiev socionists and uh, some people who were colleagues of Aushra Augustinovichute, who was the creator of socionics. So it was all... Um, the, uh, the paradigms that we used, uh, they were created in 80s and 90s, something, something like that. But mm -hmm. uh, when we held, uh, uh, when we had uh, numerous typings, when we had a, a quantity of people that uh, is significant, when I, I, th I consider it happened when we uh, collected about 1000 typings, we started to understand that something is wrong. Mm. Something is wrong with the methodology, something is wrong with all that we do, and the type is not the thing that is described by the classical socionics. Because uh, many features, psychological, they stayed aside from the type. Uh, we met people that were of the same type, but they had very different behavior, they had very different positions in life, and we started uh, thinking what is the reason, because mm. all the socionical sources, they describe, for example, we can take Jack London and uh, they describe uh, him like an entrepreneur and nothing else. So, mm -hmm. and we started to find people of this type that are, I don't know, teachers at school, that are artists, musicians, and we started thinking, why? Why does it happen? Uh, what What is the connection? Uh, then uh, we used all the uh, methods that, uh, I don't know if you are acquainted with those methods, because uh, the mm -hmm. early socionists, they mm, proposed a number of methods. Um, appearance, photo typing, yeah. um, uh, body constitution, um, behavior, profession, uh, semantical method, and many others. Um, then later we tried to use uh, reining, uh, reining mm -hmm. science, so they are very, very abstract and they are still, I think they are not grounded well. No. So no. we tried to use everything uh, that existed and it was a mess <laughs> the first uh, the first period. And later we understood that um, we should take only a part of each method, method to make something reasonable, to make the results of typing stable in order that uh, 
the practice shall be the criteria of uh, truth. So if we suppose that uh, some person belongs to this or that type, we should uh, see some proofs in his life of this. Uh, we should see intertype relations. We should see the functions and uh, everything you know from classical socionics. So we understood that intertype relations not always work like they were described. Uh, we mm, also discovered that uh, quadra values are not so strict uh, mm -hmm. as they were described. And um, a, a great importance has not only a quadra sometimes, but a club. I don't know mm -hmm. if you use such uh, such a term. Yes. Yes. And, and we found many mistakes in our early early typing. And uh, still, uh, some people come to us that were typed five or six years ago, and mm -hmm. we recheck the socionical types. We understand that mistake uh, took place because we uh, didn't took into account, didn't take into account the psychosophical type. So mm -hmm. all these things that uh, that we didn't took at that time, but we should take now. So and uh, such uh, such method crystallized somehow from practice everything because uh, when we gathered a critical amount of typings, uh, the critical amount of uh, observations over. Uh, people of the same type we made a conclusion so this this term this uh, position from early socionics uh, for example does not work or it works another or uh, quadra values can be manifested like this and mm. etc Some, something like this oh, thank you Tim. i'm just going to very quickly close my door because of course my okay. young has left it open <laughs> okay Hello, hello. Знакомые лица тут у нас пришли. Let's see. Well, oh, I see someone speaking already. Oh, fantastic. Ah, oh, people saying good morning. How oh, nice. So, yeah, I think let's take a look at some of our questions we also got here. And, yeah, what I'm going to say about the World Socionic Society is started up, um, well, I think around six years ago now. Mm -hmm. And the idea of it was that we just wanted to help connect people, especially more in the English-speaking world, but everywhere else as well. Just to learn a bit more about socionics, I think it's very much unknown at the time. I think the Myers Briggs was very popular in the West, and before if we could get together a group, you have people who know what they're talking about in socionics. Hopefully, that can start to affect the culture in some way, make it more socionics friendly, and then trying to educate more people around the country. Before I started up WSS, I've been doing a London-based meetup. I started that up initially with um, a lady called Olga, and then after we were, after a while we went our separate ways, and um, I decided to expand the group. I got um, a university society together at UCL, and that, that was quite fun. And yeah, just started to get a, a good amount of people and managed to nurture over the years. We poached a few members from a local Myers Briggs group as well. We've all, that's the thing. I guess one of the things that we've always had we've always had an interaction with Myers Briggs groups recently we had a very um positive interaction we're trying to you know collaborate and uh, compare and contrast and I thought that this the Facebook group would have been a way of actually just reaching out internationally online and that took off quite well we got um, a good number of people, not nearly as many as you get in your YouTube channel um for Western standard it's 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 pretty good for and well, after that, I bumped into this guy called Peter um, Peter Bartle, known as Expat, and he helped found uh, Wikisocion with Rick DeLong. This is sort of the, the start of English-speaking socionics, really, mm -hmm. it's Americans and British most, mostly. And some of it was just translated pieces from Russia, but then a lot more thought went into it over time. I think we developed this attitude of, the Russians, they, they've caught up to something very, very interesting here. Some of the descriptions aren't too scientific, some of them are a bit straightforward, a bit too um, um, simplistic. So you also need to... Like a horoscope. Yeah, in a way, yes. And it didn't really get... A lot of descriptions didn't really get into, into depth. I, I found as I started to interact with more Russian sources, I did feel a little bit disappointed at times because there wasn't necessarily that clarity and nuance which people who were more say uh, my friend Peter uh, were giving out 
I say that it's not that there was like a whole group of English sociologists who knew sociology a lot better than the Russians, nothing like that. It's more one or two or three people who just really built up an understanding over a few years. And those people have spent more time listening to and learning from, Peter among them and others as well. And well, I say our approach has always been, has developed to being about, yes, there is, impressions are important, but it's about taking that initial impression and then, su and then supporting it with evidence, seeing how the impression may be wrong, and building upon that to feel, to create a narrative which support best supports the range of data you manage to collect about that person from different sources. Uh, okay, they're doing this particular thing in this particular situation. Are they also doing this in other situations? Is it showing up um, consistently and frequently? The more different contexts we have around a person, I think the more you're able to get a sense of a particular socioeconomic type fitting. And sometimes it can be a bit more difficult, a bit more unusual. I mean, look at why is it unusual? What's going on here? We thought maybe there's, within the socioeconomic type, there can be growth, there could be areas you go back to, you fall back on when things aren't going so well, say the mobilizing function and a demonstrative. Um, one thing my friend Peter did was look at the typing of Donald Trump. I know Galenko's given a SEE for him. Um, we, we ended up giving um, SLE. And one of the things we looked at was when he started out, there was far more of a focus on extroverted logic. When he spoke, there was more of a, a matter of fact, very technical, businessy language. It wasn't so dramatic. He had technical knowledge, technical know-how, and he gave that off far more in his interviews. But over time, he became more grandiose, more dramatic, more emotive, and more interested in doing things which reached out to people and got them emotionally um, um, frenzied, got them more uh, emotionally driven. Sometimes it fell awfully flat. Sometimes he came across as being like a buffoon. A lot of the time, he came across being a buffoon. And he cared a lot about that. He used to check news articles to see if that was what, if people were responding the way he wanted to. So what we saw here was someone who started off from a more matter of fact, logical, businessy, that sort of practical approach, but started to invest more of a time in what we think is more extroverted ethics. And we see that as sort of a natural growth across situations for what an SLE might do from the sort of taken for granted to the more high risk, high reward um, tactic. But so what is the version of Donald Trump type do you no, feel I, now? I, we think SLE makes the most sense mm -hmm. in terms of what are the consistent things? The consistent thing throughout extroverted sensation in terms of everything seems to be about a degree of power, often formalized power in terms of structures, climbing up to top, becoming the president, being the boss, rather than building close relationships with people. Um, and how he talks has always consistently been about, whenever he says something, it's like, this is the absolute truth. I am stamping my own narrative onto reality. Some people would say that's being factually dishonest. But for him, it's about, I'm controlling the narrative through saying things repeatedly until people believe it, which fits a lot more with extra sensation when it's with an introverted logic. Now, then there's this, um, that he did use different rules and structures to get his own way, say when he's working in property, using preeminent domain as a means of actually getting more land to build on. Uh, it, so the idea of extra sensation introverted logic was a consistent theme throughout. And then where the trait changes, well, as I said before, that, that movement over time, starting with the sort of pragmatic, practical side, and then starting to indulge more and more in the more dramatic, emotional, political side. And, and all we can all see was consistently, there's no sense of long-term reflection, no sense of looking at what, what have I done? Is this the right thing? Is that the wrong thing? Uh, has it worked in the long run? Is this particular thing going to work out well? Or is it going to work out poorly? He just acts in the moment. He acts very well decisively in the here and now without thinking ahead. There's no, there's, and people criticize him for being overly superficial. His insults about people are always very physical. You're, you, you lack energy or you're ugly. And that very much is superficial rather than anything more in depth. So, and then the continuous lack of introverted ethics consistently. Uh, his personal relationships are fraught with chaos, divorcing this person, marrying that person. But even outside of romantic, it's with 
political rivals and political allies, as soon as someone publicly criticizes him, he'll throw them under a bus, get rid of them. But if they're publicly praising him, even if they had been an enemy just before, he'll suddenly start treating them nicely again. So there's no consistency of attitudes towards people. Just how are people acting? And is the way that they're behaving, is it giving the impression to others that I am the good guy? Am I, am I someone people should respect? You know, it can be a sign of irrationality and it can be a sign of, mm. for example, if we suppose that he's a Napoleon, mm. sensor ethic, extrovert, I think this version, this version is also possible. And uh, we even incline that he might be a Napoleon mostly. Okay. Because all, all the traits that you have listed, they, they're quite close with all these uh, both types because they both have extroverted sens sensory as a basic function. Yes. And um, we know many politicians that have uh, the same type, sensory, ethical, extrovert. Mm. And they are very uh, inconsistent. They are very, uh, their behavior is not irrational, might be from, from a side. Mm. They, today we are friends with this, later we are enemies and something like that. It's, it's quite okay for this type. So mm. oh, according no. to our observations, okay. but uh, and, Nevertheless, it's a very, it's a reasonable version because I saw Donald Trump sometimes typed into Don Quixote, no. and, uh, Robespierre and something like that. Oh, goodness gracious. Ah, oh, dear. I mean, okay. One thing I would like to explore to you at some point then, maybe once I got through the questions which I've already sent you, because I know we need to go through those, I'd like to discuss maybe more how, in, how to tell apart, say, kindred types when we know they're, they're irrational. But how does the creative act differently to say the vulnerable? So I think that's the main area to look at in terms of taking part of Don, uh, 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 Napoleon from uh, Zukov. Um, and that'll be worth looking at. Um, let me go towards the questions now, just so that I know you've okay. these, and I think we'll be right to discuss these. So you use a semantic method to assess type of information metabolism in modern sociomics. So it, is this using certain keywords? Say, for instance, if someone says, um, I feel joy, if someone uses a word like that, that will be a marker for, say, of extroverted ethics. Or are you focusing more on sentence structure? So are there certain ways they put their sentences together? Well, what are you looking for in the semantic method? You know, none of this. <laughs> uh, the sense the sentence structure depends mostly on the grammatics of certain language so we cannot rely on it because mm. if we translate something from one language into another the semantics shall remain mm. uh, the same and the meanings shall main, uh, remain the same because we typed for example stephen king we talked with you about him uh, in our discussions and we typed for example Mm, many poets that were not Russian speaking, but were yeah. translated into Russian, and the semantics remains the same. Uh, it, uh, the main point is that we do not rely on certain words. There are many uh, directions in socionics here, and they will be certainly because people of various uh, people of different types they find sometimes uh, this method reliable. Mm. They think that if we are somebody is telling that he's happy, that it, it is extroverted emotion mm -hmm. or something like that. But uh, if we talk about a person that tells us that he feels joy, according to our method, it doesn't mean anything mm -hmm. because we should uh, look over the context uh, the person tells us. And that's why we have, um, if you watched our videos uh, with our questioner, mm -hmm. when uh, ladies uh, replied the questions, uh, we have very, various questions according to society, private life, uh, government, uh, giving explanations of terms and something like that. Because we give a free space for every type to manifest its functions. Mm. And uh, the, most, the most important part, one of the most important parts is a description of pictures because it's total freedom of speaking. We, we made a huge uh, investigation. Uh, it uh, this questionnaire uh, came out from practice. We just showed various pictures to people of various types, and we noticed that uh, this semantics that belongs to certain functions, uh, this cannot be somebody uh, something like uh, 
it cannot be imitated mm -hmm. so if you look at the picture you are describing it with all with only with that semantics and only with that functions that you have and you cannot imitate those functions that you don't have mm -hmm. the only way for you is to learn word to word what said some person with another type but we can show just another picture and everything is ruined and person just is left one by one with the picture and he has to describe it uh, i go uh, nearer to the examples uh, for example we have in our questionnaire pictures that are realistic for example three people are sitting on the ground they're speaking with each other after the hunt for example it is a down-to-earth picture uh, people of sensory types uh, are very easy to describe it with many details what clothes do they have what faces do they have what did they do uh, what is the weather on the picture are they cold or they're hot and mm -hmm. so, something like that people of intuitive types look at this down-to-earth picture and find nothing to speak about they they perceive it as an interesting picture they need and they like more pictures that are not realistic and we have such such pictures in our questionnaire uh, for example we have picture where two planes are flying and there is a bench between them and uh, lovers sit on this bench and intuits are mostly inspired by these pictures they find hidden sense they find a metaphor in this picture they find some hidden uh, hidden context that artists might put into it while people of sensory types look at this picture and tell this is unrealistic they would die out there it's very cold I, up and it, this is not possible because two planes cannot fly so close just an easy just an easy example uh, the same the same goes with logic ethics we show people pictures that contain people uh, and uh, people of ethical types find easy to describe the character to describe the relations between people on the picture they are interested in what the ethical situation happens on the picture mm -hmm. while logics look at the picture with people and say, okay a man a woman nothing to say more so they do not have the processor they do not have strong ethics to describe and to um, to explain what is happening and uh, we noticed that uh, for people of ethical types it is much more interesting when uh, on the picture there is uh, there are people to describe them if the picture does not contain anybody it's not so interesting for ethical people for ethical types and uh, vice versa for logics so something in a very simple way it's something like that Mm, I think that makes a lot of sense. So, so for telling part clubs, I can I can maybe see where there may be some other sort of social biases can often kick in. Like if you're asking someone who's an intuitor to look at a photo of, you know, a very down to earth scene, they may some of them might get the the false impression that, oh, I'm meant to be describing the concrete details, even when Really, you just want them to be able to put whatever they want onto it. I can see where that might be an issue. But there's always going to be error in every process we use. So, no, I think that makes a lot of sense. No, good. It all becomes understandable. It all becomes mm. clear when we show a number of pictures. Some of yeah. them are are mm. realistic. Some others are not. And we also not only look at the uh, macro functions. We're not. Uh, we do not only see and uh, here, for example, intuition as, as, as is. A white or black intuition, it does not important. Uh, people mm -hmm. of sensory types and people of intuitive types, they describe different. But later we can see as well the color of function. Mm -hmm. Is that introverted or extroverted? Mm -hmm. it, it's very clear when a person is describing a picture. Uh, we can see what color of intuition does he have or in uh, values or in strong functions. So, for example, for people of intuitive types, it is okay to speak both black and white intuition yes. when, des when describing pictures. So we understand if we have enough information, we can uh, suggest that he is an intuitive type and mm. look at other his uh, replies to other questions. That makes sense. But one query I'd have is, what if someone show, you show someone a picture and they speak, for instance, plenty of, say, black intuition, but no white intuition. Would that necessarily be um, an extroverted intuitive lean type like an ILE or an IEE? 
but could it also be an ESC or an LSC? Mm -hmm. It's not necessary because uh, the variants of explanation of modal A, mm. for example, old socionics told that uh, people speak aspects only from the block ego. Yeah. There was yeah. such an idea. Uh, later, there was an idea that a person can speak uh, all the four aspects from his values, from quadra values, and other four aspects are neglected. But we found out that in some cases there can be uh, told allowed seven aspects of eight. Uh, aside um, vulnerable or painful function, it is a blind spot of psyche, so people do not speak about them. They just have nothing to say about it. Yeah. No, I, I, I lean more to agreement with you there. I think that I think that each aspect, apart from the vulnerable, should be spoken about, but in a certain context. The ignoring hardly, mm -hmm. rarely, it should be more supporting rather than focused on in its own. I think one can expect to see plenty of a demonstrative. Um, demonstrative, it is number eight. Yeah, number eight. I think we can mm -hmm. see out of the valued... Uh, so out, so out of the subdued functions, the non-valued ones, I think you should see plenty of demonstrations, like the exception to the rule. And I expect to see quite a bit of the mobilizing as well uh, out of the valued. Um, yeah, and of course, the ego is going to be there, but it's not just the ego. There's a lot more to a bit of this, the ego. Um, one way of telling apart mirrors can be looking at what the demonstrator function is. What, what, what else is there other than the ego that's supporting? So, yeah. No, I think that methodology makes quite a lot of sense. And I like the idea of you giving that space for the type to show itself. It's similar to my questions. I ask quite general questions and people say, oh, how shall I answer this? And I always say, just answer the way you want to answer. Because in that sort of way, I don't want to tell you how to answer it because that's going to restrict the information you're going to give me. And it's giving people that, making people feel that they are, feel that they can say anything, feel that they're safe to say anything because everything they give is going to be helpful. Hmm. Very good. Um, so how do you use these semantics to tell apart um, the different functions? So you said before that it's probably seven out of the eight that you should see in semantics. But how do you then Sometimes. Go... Okay, sometimes. Okay, no, no, fair enough. Uh, but how do you then go in to the information that has been presented and tell apart what is leading, what is creative, what is suggestive. How, how do you do that? Okay, it's a very, very important question. Mm -hmm. uh, we are coming out, we are coming from the thesis that uh, every person speaking of his strong functions, it mm -hmm. means block ego and block id, mm -hmm. or even, yes, yes, id. Uh, first function, second, seventh, and eighth. So, for example, if we have logic and intuit, one of four, it does not important. He should speak and uh, reply on the most questions using logic and intuition. Mm. And if we have such club uh, clear picture, then we go um, to the concrete type. If he is an extrovert or an introvert, and what quad what quadra is his native? What quadra is his own? Mm. And um, so we start from strong functions and later we see what uh, uh, what valuable aspects mm. does he have. For example, we uh, we understood that we have a logic into it in front of us and then we just need to clear if he is from alpha or from gamma. So, for example, if we hear black sensory from him, we can exclude Robespierre because he has a pain painful function. Yeah. Yeah, and later we uh, we look at the color of uh, ethics that is valuable for him, uh, white ethics or black ethics, and every aspect has um, uh, all the it. They are they make duality pairs. For example, we know that white ethics uh, can be followed by black logic. For example, it's. Uh, uh, ethical estimation of any deeds of person, good or bad, relationship, friendship, and so on. And we, if we see and if we hear such uh, semantics from a person, we can exclude Don Quixote, for example, because he has white ethics as a painful function. Mm. So we come to uh, only two types. It is Balzac and Jack London. And uh, if he is an extroverter, 
Uh, does he have one, oh. two, three? Okay. Frozen a bit too are you, Oh, you're back now. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, so if we are choosing between uh, the logics from third quadra, for, mm -hmm. for example, for gamma, we should clear if it is a Balzac or Jack London. So we have to find extraversion or introversion, or we should find if he is a white intuition, the most strongest, the most strong function or black logic. And as well, we can find, uh, does he have black sensory uh, mm -hmm. more strong? And then it will be Jack London. Or we find that he is speaking about mostly white intuition and white ethics. So we get Balzac in this way. So th something like that, very simplified, I told you. I think that makes perfect sense. No, that's other than use of pictures. We, I, do, I prefer the interview method, but I think pictures is a more formal process. I think that's pretty much what we're doing as well. Looking for the information elements, the presence and absence of said information elements, and from that narrowing it down. We, we differ slightly in that we tend to narrow down first with quadra rather than club. Mm -hmm. And I think one reason that we tend to do that is because I find that the mobilizing function can sometimes throw things off. Sometimes, an, for instance, say an ESI can come across as being intuitive because there's a lot of introvert intuition they may have been working on and developing. And that could come out in there. If they look at a very down to earth picture, some of them may end up talking about something that's very white intuitionally. Sometimes, but uh, ESE, they are sensory. And yeah. uh, it, it's quite difficult for them to give some too abstract descriptions. And if we listen to them, firstly, we should mm -hmm. uh, hear white ethics and sensory, the strongest function. White intuition can be, but mm -hmm. practice shows that it is a weak function of them. Mm -hmm. So they cannot show some superific uh, results in yeah. white intuition. No, 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 nothing, nothing overwhelming. I think, well, the thing is, how, how would you define a, a strong versus a weak information element? There are many ways we use all of them. Mm. It depends on the concrete case or what mm. we have. Sometimes people send us uh, questionnaires uh, replied in a written form. We do not see the person. Uh, in most cases, people write videos mm. uh, like published on our channel. So video is better because we can use uh, a visual method as well because the majority of people of the same type, they have a similar brain structure and it reflects on the facial uh, constituency of the, of the face. So the mimical reactions and something like that. We, uh, we know that sometimes um, parents, uh, sometimes children look like parents, but it, don't, it does not mean that they uh, inherit their types. Mm. So the uh, mimical reactions, the structure of face, it, it, it is also a key to the type. So we listen to person, we look at him, and we uh, put all the information together in order to get a concrete type. Sometimes some people look so, so, so typical that we have a initial version where we're mm -hmm. watching the video. And later we just take all the, uh, all the things that we uh, supposed in the, in the beginning. So something like, sometimes it goes like this. Okay, and I, I, I can see that in terms of the method. And it's interesting you talk about the, the visual element. Now, I have been, at least officially, very critical of visual identification. But I've always put that in terms of people who just rely on it and only it. And they can't change their mind in the typing um, after yes. looking at their face. I think of, say, some of the, a couple of schools in Moscow, I think, have been particularly inclined yes. towards this. And... I, I found it to be a bit balmy. I think one of them typed um, Franklin D. Roosevelt, uh, Robespierre, um, mm. because he had a long face. It's a and, poor version, I yeah, think. Yeah, no, indeed, indeed. So, yeah, we, we uh, that, that was my, been my experience of VI, visual identification, used very, very poorly. I think there are some patterns. I don't think there are rules, but I think there are patterns in physical appearance. I think both static and dynamic should also be looked at, not just the static. How they got this this face, okay, and people of this type tend to be a bit like this, like 
let, let's not let beat around the bush. SEIs do tend to be a bit um, on the round side at times, um, but not all of them are. And there are many who can have supermodel like uh, waistlines. Um, so, oh, I think it's paused again. Hmm. Timo, are you with me? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. so yeah, they, they can always, they can, there are patterns there, physical, facial, but we need to be skeptical and always check these patterns so we don't rely on them like that. Of course. And I think there's that. So I, I Irish people who can, who are able to accept that there is some visual data to be looked at, as long as it's put in its place rather than relied on entirely. But what I was asking more was what the the definition you use for strong versus weak, not necessarily in terms of how you then look for it in, in your methodology, if I asked that before, but more mm -hmm. what makes something strong, what makes something um, weak. What, what, um, and I ask this because um, rather than just being how much something shows up, because I think that can be complicated by things like bold and cautious and um rather than look at that i think what does strong and weak mean without bold and cautious what is the definition that stands on its own mm -hmm. how do we tell apart mm -hmm. weak and strong functions yes without uh, bold and cautious uh it can be quite maybe a literal it can sound a bit literal but uh, if we take for example ethical sense introvert dreiser we just Yesterday we had such a girl on typing, for example. What do they are interested? What are they interested about? People of ethical and sensory types. They are interested mostly in people's relationships. They are interested mostly in family, friendship, stability. They are interested in upbringing children. They are interested in being a household, or it depends, woman or man, but. Anyways, if we are sensory types, they like to take care about their homes. They have very down-to-earth thinking. So we're, if we see an average ethical sensory introvert, Dreiser, he has something like that interested. He, they are a bit conservative about uh, political views. They are very stable and they prefer mm, stability in society. They are very uh, worried about... Uh, moral uh, morals in the society because they have the basic functions of uh, white ethics uh, which is very sensitive to such questions they often tell us that our youth is not as it used before they are too rude they do not uh, want to make families they do want, they are very they have very bad upbringing and so on so the white ethics is a certain conclusions about people their traits of character their moral and yeah. something like that and if we are if we are listening to a questioner from a person of the such type uh, he puts his white ethics in the majority of uh, replies and it it can be a question about for example our nature our planet but every question they lead only to people's relationships friendship and something mm -hmm. like that if we ask uh, about nature if we ask about president if we ask about job everything goes here to the topic of uh, human relationships so if we mm -hmm. see the tendency that every question is going one time two times three times all, all to one topic then we can suppose that uh, he, he has this person has white ethics somewhere in strong functions and later we yeah. search and identify the final type no, no, fair enough i think well i know i i, I agree with you that many esis drivers do tend to be quite sort of traditional perhaps more of a conservative aspect but i've also known some drivers have been very much on the left of of, of a yes life. it's okay and it's fine as long as they are showing that that quick that focus on what they think of other people and that quickness to judge um, their attitudes towards people and act on that and what i would be expecting to see is a lot of background white sensation i think that there, there should be that as well i should see both black and white sensation being used in mm -hmm. sort of fluid togetherness both of them um although what i say is depending on one sample I can also see, imagine if you use lots of pictures, it's probably better. Um, but I can imagine if I would give them, say, one picture, I would not also be surprised if I got quite a, a burst of white intuition at some point 
from a driver as well. And I think the reason I was talking about strong and weak is that I would have said that a strong function is one which is able to be used appropriately in almost any situation. It doesn't need to, to build up a bank of experience or familiarity. It just goes and it does it with confidence and does it well. Whereas I think that for a weak function, it now depends, they course, it 1D functions can be different from 2D functions in this. I think that the 2D functions can actually be quite good and almost look strong, provided they've built up a bank of familiarity. And mm -hmm. they and it's in a situation where they, they're used to using it like that, and they've built up those norms, sort of what Bukalov was talking about. I think that's, I personally, I've had to be the most insightful way of defining the difference between a strong and weak, that need for norms or being able to act regardless of the situation. And of course, the one dimensional, they never really get the hang of it. Maybe some can to some degree, but not much. Um, so yeah, and that's why I would have been wary about using, say, a few, even there may be cases, the more pictures you use, I imagine, the less likely it is you're going to get a mistype there. But I imagine if I use one photo, you could have hit on a situation where they've got norms in their mobilizing function. And that yeah, could sometimes even strong function can sound like it's too narrow, for example. But mm. we, if we analyze all the information in general, we understand that we have yeah. such ESE, but he's not very clever, for example. But these functions are clearly strong. Mm. Yeah, no, no, fair enough. No, I think that's very sensible. I do. Um, OK. And also, this is more about strength. So how do you tell um, how, how do you tell value? How do you tell that that, that that use of that semantics is about strength rather than about value or about value rather than strength? Mm -hmm. uh, how do we identify if the function is valuable in quadra values or not? Yes. Yes. Uh, we come from, from a thought that every valuable aspect should be followed by his dual aspect. For example, if we hear black sensory, we should hear white intuition right here mm -hmm. and very close to each other. If a person is talking about, um, for example, uh, value of time, the speed of uh, everything around, the speed of time, the speed of time is changing everywhere and something like that, everywhere shall be black sensory. It's like a sense of danger, resources, power, Str struggle and something like that. If we hear both these aspects, we can suggest that this person is from central quadras, and then we should and then we should go further and understand who is that? Is that intuit or black sensory? Is he from beta or gamma? Much mm. other. So every every function shall be combined with a dual aspect. For example, if we hear uh, white logic, we should definitely find a black uh, ethics and person okay if we hear white sensory then black intuition shall be here okay and okay that makes sense but what i would then ask is what would be an example then of um let's say white logic being followed by black ethics what would it look like in one of your typing sessions mm -hmm. uh white logic is um the main thing about white logic is that it is subjective and abstract. So there are no concrete words that can be used in every situation. And uh, there are no words that we can definitely say, oh, well, look, this is white logic. So we are starting from the beginning. We're searching the club, we're searching the quadra, and later we can uh, tell if that, for example, we. Uh, there was a girl not so long time ago, we even published her interview on our channel. He is an, he is, uh, she is a Robespierre, logical intuitive. in artistic learning. She is very interested in music, theater, and so on. She has a uh, high emotion, uh, according to Psychosophia. But when we were watching her, we understood that she is an intuit. She has white intuition, not in a painful position, not in a white, not in a blind spot. So. Uh, we found out that she is an intuitive type. All the eight sensorics are neglected. Later, we discovered that she is a logic. Intuit and logic 
that uh, has no black sensory because we have special questions in our questionnaire according wars revolutions uh, government and everything with uh, fight uh, themes the topics of central quadras and she avoided that like near neo in the first matrix uh, the bullets were <laughs> flying over her and she didn't she didn't give any 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 reply on each of these questions yeah. so we understood that black sensory somewhere that she does not see and later we started to listen to her replies concerning ethics we have special questions that are supposed to describe what color of ethics does a person have in his values so she described a bit white ethics a bit only uh, so we understood once again that she's a logic because mm -hmm. her her um, thoughts about people are very narrow uh, her thoughts about relationships and friendship are very narrow so we understood that she's logic logic once again so mm -hmm. we have an intuit an intuit logic that does not have black sensory later she described for example we have special question about friendship and friends the inner circle many people of uh third and fourth quadra gamma and delta according to their value of white ethics they do have special circle of people to which they uh, hold special relationship it is my person it is my friend we're uh, talking regularly we see each other we go to each other to homes we are uh, we know about deals of each other and something like that she she is always helping me i always help her and everything like that so people of first two quadras they do not describe such things and this girl she did not uh, expect it we expected to hear for example white ethics in order to check if maybe she is a logic from Dela, maybe but no she described a person who is her friend as a person who gives her positive emotional uh emotional i forget the word <laughs> <laughs> yes so positive emotions is the key criteria for her to uh, socialize with people yeah. and she didn't um, she didn't describe any relationship any deep relationship or special qualities that person should have like white ethics do for example they describe their personal friends like very reliable person very polite person and something like that she did not tell anything about that she described mm -hmm. a bit white ethics more black ethics she has she has no black uh, sensory she is an mm -hmm. intuit logic and she described introversion quite uh, quite okay so we came to con to the conclusion that she is a robespierre yeah i think your 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 methodology sounds pretty similar to ours but yeah we're doing pretty much the same things asking questions looking for evidence of the information elements and narrowing it down based on that and yeah no, definitely that, that that makes sense um and you have typed thousands of people Timur. Yes. how did you use those typings to refine your method and how did you check that your method continues to type people correctly i told in the beginning that we have revealed our own mistakes just mm. when you have uh just when you are on a certain level of understanding of your own methodology you think that everything is okay about it but later when you type and type people you understand that that person was not typed correctly you understand that he or she is uh, manifesting some function that you have that you didn't notice for example for this or that reason and sometimes you have a critical amount of observations uh to over people that you are acquainted with and sometimes uh, you understand that the type you gave to his person four or five years ago you understand that it is wrong you are checking with new methods you are showing pictures and you you make your eye like that and you understand that was a mistake here i can see uh, the manifestation of functions that i didn't know several years ago i think it it's a normal procedure it's a normal process of a person and one person evaluates another person so mm -hmm. there is no other objective device that can tell us that this result is 100 percent objective okay. so you can and uh, one very important uh very important thing is that we have we have 
taught a uh, plenty of people on our courses they can t that can type quite well and they have their own communities in their cities and their towns and they know types from us they know their types and they are looking and they are observing each other and they're all the time checking sometimes we we get in our community there that this person is some there's something wrong with this type please check him so we're checking and if we found that yes we, we have mistaken for example Stirlitz with jack london something like that so mm. sometimes that occurs but uh, over the time such cases occur more rare and i think it's a uh, it's a sign of of that our method became more objective it is mm. proved by people that are far away from us and sometimes it happens like that one person sends us uh, his questionnaire we type him we send him results and later mm. another person and we do not know that they are got acquainted with each other other person sends us it comes out that they are duality or they are from one quadra and they are very good friends so we didn't know about that but we typed person one person two and it came out that they're friends mm. so intertype relations they they are proved that's very good i, I know some people often uh, i've seen some people try to type just using intertype relations it's usually people oh. who are very they're usually very high in white ethics Mm -hmm. and they are just learning socionics they don't know it so well and they think they think they got their type down correctly and when they start trying to type other people based on their relationships with them and then eventually if they find that they're not typed correctly everything else comes crashing down yes yes and the intertype relations does not always work like mm -hmm. it uh, it was described because intertype relations can be spoiled by not very suitable psychosophic types for example so on information level they do understand each other well but it does not mean that they will be friends for example or or that they will be comfortable with each other if they work together for example mm -hmm. so we when people ask us for analyzing uh analyzing the personnel or analyzing families we always identify socionic types and uh, psychosophic because for example we, we uh, several weeks ago we had typing of uh, the whole family of four persons mm. mother father and two daughters yeah. it came out that they are all from gamma they have nothing to worry about at the first sight yeah. but later we knew that uh, there is a strict conflict between father and between his wife and between one of the daughters we typed their types um, according to psychosophia and we found that they have strict conflict according to will because mm -hmm. his wife and his daughter has first will and the father has third will the most vulnerable one and the character of interaction i described them that you have first will and it will be very difficult for the third will to deal with you because you are very self-consistent you always know what you want and the third will wants to have a dialogue to have a common decision and something like that and they said yes we have many years conflicts that are based on this principle but they are from the same quadra at the same time interesting I, that is interesting i mean i can see how i will see how some of that could maybe overlap with some parts of socionics at least in terms of inert and contact function dichotomy one of the mm -hmm. things which can lead say activators to um, often um, compete with each other for the same space is because their one of their leading functions is coming up against the other's mobilizing function both inert um, and as a result both sort of want to be making the decisions in the area of their leading and mobilizing take an ILE or an ESC for instance but both of them if are, you're speaking about extroverted activators yeah. is that right Yes, yes. So take so they take a Don Quixote and Hugo. So you may see examples of them both competing to be the one to create a fill that environment with black intuition and black ethics. Whereas if you take, say, um, a, a Don Quixote and uh, Robespierre or Don Quixote and um, Duma, there isn't that same competition because every inert function comes up against a contact function. 
So one may say, oh, okay, you, you can decide in this area and I'll decide in that area. And so it leads to a more harmonious interaction, even though these are all in the same quadra. I, I wonder if, well, maybe I'm just drawing parallels here. Would you say that's a similar sort of scenario in psychosophy where Will, the, um, the, the first position and the third position are both sort of inert. And that's it, they both want to do it their, their way. Mm -hmm. You know that I can add here that we have typed many families, mm. uh, wife and husband, they that have activator type of in relationships. Mm. So ac activator relationships, they are very, very good. They are recommended for creating a family and so on. They are almost as good as uh, duality and mm. uh, very much depends on the psychosophic uh, types because we saw a very harmonic activator pairs they communicate easily they distribute the leadership they have no any conflicts between each other mm -hmm. but if they have conflict in will in emotion or every everything anywhere they can have so this this moment can always spoil the good interaction between them in general it is good but there are nuances that are repeated over the time mm. yeah that makes sense um Let's see. How might language barriers affect semantics when typing? Um, as you can see, we have typings in English, for example. Recently, we made uh, introduced a uh, service that we can provide typing in Polish language. Mm. Uh, we have many people that do not speak Russian but they uh, fill out our questionnaire in English and it is okay. The semantics is on the, on the spot mm -hmm. and uh, psychosophic uh, questionnaires are typed as well. So I cannot see any problem here. Uh, everything depends on the uh, correct translation, I think. Mm. Okay, makes sense. I think it will be a good idea for more of the um, WSS typed people to go and do your service, see if they get a similar sort of typing or not. I know we've had uh, Laura as the one example, but I think we need more examples. Mm -hmm. Of course. More of an affinity in, in process and whether, because if, if for instance, we're, we're, we're typing people consistently very different to you, mm -hmm. that might be looking at why is that occurring? I don't think either of us, given the way you describe your methodology, it's very similar to the way we describe our methodology. It seems if something is consistently going differently between the two of us, it seems that something we can work out and make it more compatible. Maybe. Mm, I think so. It may be just a question of looking under the hood and seeing what exactly is different, maybe going in deeper. It may be a, an understanding issue. It may be a, a matter of the definitions of the information elements and what exactly are we looking at and saying that is that, this is this. And I think that could be a very productive exercise. Such problem exists in Russian-speaking socionics for many years, and there are even directions in socionics that are strictly different from ours. Some mm. people here mentioned in the comments uh, DCNR, Gulenko system. Mm. They are completely different. Uh, it came from the initial mistake, in our opinion, in description of white and black logics. Uh, mm. Because Gulenko described white logics as every scheme structure, rules, instructions and and so on while it does not necessarily means that uh, it can be connected with white logics because white and black logics is it's like they are like the same but they are speaking about different because extroverted logic or black logic it is closer to natural sciences astronomy mm -hmm. physics chemistry biology mm -hmm. everything that can be collected make making an experiment everything that can be uh, put into practice, everything that can be efficient and so on. Yeah. Uh, black logic is a method that can be uh, applied and had some concrete result from it. So it is closer to extroverted logic. That's why we typed uh, Laura, for example, uh, to Jack London type, because in our opinion, she has strong connection of black logic and white intuition, central quadra and everything like that. I know that she has 
uh, or uh, her own opinion. She is not dis she disagree with us, but it's okay because in our opinion, Gulenka he positions himself as Robespierre. In our opinion, he is a Jack London because he is rational, logic into it, and uh, even there is a video where he tells all the four aspects from Gamma Quadra. He tells about the competition between various socioeconomic directions. He tells about uh, the development of socioeconomics over time. She t he tells about the dynamics of its developing. He tells about struggle between schools of socioeconomics and everything like that. The full number of gamma values. So if a person is involved in science, it does not mean that he is a uh, Don Quixote or Robespierre, in our opinion, because there are scientists that make applied uh, investigations and there are theoretical scientists that may be close to closer to white logics but it's not necessary because they are often uh, mixed with each other i this is where i'm a little bit more struggling because let, let's take um this is how i see is the difference between introverted logic and extroverted logic i'm releasing a video soon on it just editing it but i would say that the main dichotomies telling them apart would be static and dynamic and extroverted introverted and looking at those i'd imagine therefore that introvert logic white logic would be more about the internal consistency of one's structures things have to make sense consistently there can be no contradiction the, um, truth can be reached through deduction um, a priori knowledge as it were you just think about it and it seems to make sense seems to be consistent so that is the truth whereas when it comes to extroverted logic back logic because it's more dynamic because it's more about um rather than refining things basic consistency it's about accumulating as many facts as you can to enhance your factual knowledge and then you see how it's actually working how it's developing how it's working for this dynamic process i say as being more the empirical approach as you say yes. more science more a posteriori knowledge I know this is the case because it I can see it working and I'm rather than having a set idea of how things are supposed to work based on my theory it's more about what is actually working and that can be inconsistent that means that you can hold contradictory opinions it doesn't matter because both of them happen to work and that can lead to a clash so I often thought that maybe the white logic people are maybe more stereotypically speaking more the mathematicians the philosophers the theologians um the the theorists rather than the practical empirical side where they're actually looking at hard science seeing let's see if the measurements does that actually work are the numbers supporting this now when i look at glenko it seems to me that from the semantic method he's said enough things in terms of black logic and white intuition for you to type him as a jack london rather than a robespierre at yes. the same time looking at how he's approached socionics i've seen a lack of extroverted logic the way he tends to do things is he thinks about various musings and he puts together a theoretical structure and then follows that very very deeply without then checking to see does it actually work there's been no sign of galenko actually doing any empirical testing of his theories but he's gone far off into things like cognitive styles like um whether you are someone who is uh vortical synergetic or if you're uh, um, algorithmic um basically putting together um static and dynamic with positivist and negativist these reigning dichotomies which haven't really been tested properly to see if they actually work he adds all these different theoretical components and you see now there's rewriting of model a into model g another another reinvention of the wheel another putting together of the logical system rather than actually seeing does this actually work does this actually lead to some sort of benefit or increase to understanding i can't see him actually ask, asking himself these questions and that's what's made at least in the west we often thought that i think his, his self-typing makes a lot of sense because in a lot of the systems theoretical building but there's no sign of him actually thinking of, of things through a black logic lens so this is the interesting thing in terms of his behavior in in, in long-term about his theory he doesn't seem to be doing anything that suggests he's extroverted logic valuing but in the data you've analyzed 
you've seen semantic use of things which you've identified as black logic. Yes, yes, that's right. Mm. I and used to communicate with Gulenka in Kiev two times in 2013. I was on the conference, Sochionico conference, and 2015. Mm. He is, you know, he's very, uh, he believes in experiment. He, all his uh, presentations on the conference were connected with practical experimentation of, uh, I don't know exactly what was the, the title, but the sense was like that. Uh, he gathered people of his club, Socionic. He mm -hmm. gave them uh, a special task to sell something to foreigners or something like that, to, to unknown people. They should come to unknown people and to sell something. And they were watching how do behave various subtypes that he believes in, dominating, uh, harmonizing, and disenage his system. Yeah. He strongly believes in experiment. Creative. I think they've typed me as an highly dominant. Mm. Yeah. They try to overcome and to replace uh, psychosophy with their typology of subtypes, I think. Yeah. Because dominating a type uh, means that he, in most cases that he has, for example, dominating will first or the third one. Well, that, 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 that seems like a natural overlap to me. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Although I, would, I wouldn't, I, people have never said that I had will in the first position. I've been typed as an ILED, but uh, people have said that my logic is at the front. But I don't know. You, you probably know better than I do because I don't claim to be good at psychosophy. I don't use. I don't it. know yet. No, that's fine. Um, and I've always just said to people, even type me ILED. My the particular subtype. I think it depends on my mood and the, in, the environment I'm in. I can see how the type makes sense consistently. In t especially in terms of how it can then allow adaptation to different situations. But I think when it comes to these subtypes from Galenko's, they seem so overly specific, they seem to maybe break across situations, which becomes the flaw. And if you take it based on the exact thing which he said it's about, which is when you get people of the same type together, they start to take on differing roles. It's obvious, well, and every yeah. uh, every socionic is finding his own way to explain that. Yes. Now, but the point point is, you are hardly ever going to get a situation where you have four people of the same type together. May maybe in a situation like I don't know a philosophy um, conference, you may get a lot more ILEs. You'll still get more LIIs as well, and you'll get some ILIs coming across and, and several IEIs. So there, there are lots of re it's very hard to get four people of the same type and have that controlled environment to then look at it, see how it actually works. And this is why I find it very questionable. And Galenko, he talked about, he, he put together his theory, not from looking at experiments with people, He's happened to have referenced a particular experiment with rats and how rats took on different roles. And he thought, oh, well, if rats are going to be taking on different roles, maybe people of the same type also take on different roles. And but this is why I think, at least from an extroverted logic perspective, at least any, I know people who are very extroverted logic focused, and the first thing they're going to start doing is saying, okay, where is the evidence for this theory? How does it make, how does it actually work? What have you? What are the studies? What are the, What data have you collected? And I just don't see that same scrutiny with him. He may be paying experiments lip service, and that's another thing which is a bit more complicated. In the West, if you don't talk about experiments that have been done, if you don't talk about valuing empirical data, and, and you don't pay your dues to hard empirical science, you're not going to be taken seriously. If you're going to be a psychologist you have to pay your lip service to science. That is the culture. And so I wonder, people who are psychologists like myself, am I taught, I find myself talking a lot about extroverted logic stuff, like this is what the data says, that doesn't work, your, your, um, your methodology is clearly not gonna work here. And I can find myself saying things which uh, Jack London or uh, Sterlitz might be saying, because I know that if I don't, people are gonna think I'm some sort of crackpot. And so I wonder, yes. maybe that may be having an effect. I don't know. If we speak about Gulenka, uh, one of the signs 
of uh, extroverted logic is strong belief in behavior as a reliable source uh, of information about the type. Yes. So Gulenka strongly relies on the deeds, on actions, on the behavior that can be observed objectively. So it is a marker according to our mm -hmm. method. It is a marker of objective logic. Uh, he has very spe specific uh, psychosophical type. He has first logic. It can be too theoretical, too even autistic to some extent. And all this, um, all this, uh, forgot the word. Okay, so he can be very about his theory, not about the practice. So he's thinking about theory, he creates the theory and he is uh, quite okay about that. He does not need to check it on the practice. Now, now that's that is interesting. I think this takes us on to what my my next question is, which is basically use modern socionics alongside psychosophy, and and that now this is the interesting part because if I heard someone was very much focused on the integrity of their theory, does it all make sense, and not focusing on the practice, how is it actually working? I would immediately think from that, that is a white logic person, not a black logic person. But for you, you've said these sorts of things are not to do with white logic or black logic. They're not necessary. Uh, not necessarily. But they are, that is a psychosophy thing that is having logic in your top position. Yes. And that, that is interesting. Okay. Because that's the thing for me, that, this, is, this is how I would, would type someone a white logic as, as a good example. So that, 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 so what we say is an example of something that a person does in an interview or in, in pictures that tells you their psychosophy type rather than their socionics type. What, what, uh, what mm -hmm. Psychosophic uh, typing is completely different from that in socionics. Mm -hmm. We do not need to show any pictures. There is no semantics in psychosophy. Uh, it is a different method. We should hear from a person a number of signs that point to this or that function. Is that high or is that low? Is that resultive or monologue or is that uh, dialogue function? Mm -hmm. uh, if you are acquainted with the model in Psychosophia, so there are four functions. They, are, they have hierarchy. The first function is the strongest. So uh, the psychosophic questioner contains questions about the priorities of a person. For example, uh, if we are speaking about psychosophic logic, it is, it is responsible for any intellectual activity. And we have a number of questions that can reveal, is this person intellectually involved in some topic? Uh, does he like to study something? Uh, does he has a tendency to make some his own theory? Uh, is he is a amateur of uh, studying, for example, philosophic uh, conceptions? Uh, does he pay his time to study some questions that will never be practical for him? For example, just reading Schopenhauer or just reading Nietzsche or something like that. People of low logics tend to neglect all these things. They always have something more interesting to do. Mm. So if we want to mm. identify the type according to psychosophy, we should hear the, his priorities. According to the creator of psychosophy, and it is proved by our statistics, the majority of people on the planet uh, have physics in high functions, first or second one. Because, for example, if we... Uh, if we look at our planet, at our society in general, hmm. what is the most important and the most strong need of, of people? It is uh, good health, it is uh, good eat, clothes and everything like that. The consumption and all connected with that. It is uh, it's very simple if we look uh, from, to this from the point of view of psy psychosophia, because the majority of people, they have high physics. And their material needs are number one for them. It, and it, it is okay. Because if the majority of people were philosophers, the humanity would not survive. True. That's very yeah. true. Um, okay. But that's the thing. When I take, say, um, what you said there about logic, I don't see from that necessarily that a person would be 
so focused on the logical consistency of their theory without caring much for its practice. Then it's, uh, for instance, I can imagine saying that uh, Jack London, logic first. And I'd say, yeah, they can be very intellectually inclined. Yes. Very much about look, going into an intellectual field and telling people, right, is this actually working or not? Is this, does this support, does, is this supported by the data? And be very much about the intellectualization of data oriented uh, work. Uh, for instance, let's take, for instance, um, Sam Harris is a, is a quite well known intellectual. This is someone, a philosopher and intellectual, and has also done neuroscience um, and the neuroscience PhD. This is someone who clearly intellectualizes, clearly deals in an intellectual zone, would also be very much about taking, looking at the data to say, and draw his own conclusions. So, and always be saying, no, it's not about um, ideology. It's not about what um, you personally may think based on your structure. It's about what has science shown? And it can be a certain glorification of science and empirical data. It seems to be still intellectual. It's just not necessarily about internal consistency, more about saying, look, I'm right because I'm looking at the data, I'm looking at the science. And I wonder, that's from what you've said, now you can tell me if I'm wrong, what you said, that sounds, well, that would also fit logic first. But at the same time, it doesn't seem to me to be contradicting what we would understand from an LIE and the focus on black logic rather than white white logic. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? About your type? Oh, no, 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 not about my type. No, no, no. I was talking about the Sam Harris example. Mm, okay, I don't know what he is a person, but all that you described, we can suppose that he has psychosophic logic higher than fourth function. Okay, no, fair enough. He has a motivation in that. If a person writes scientific works, if a person is tending to make his own diplomas, books, mm -hmm. articles, and, and all, everything like that, and if he pays much attention to this activity, he has logic in most cases higher than fourth one. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Okay. Mm. We can compare even, there are good examples. We talked uh, with you about Salvador Dali and Carl Gustav Jung. Now, to... I think it will be more interesting to talk about Jung, most because mm -hmm. I think, whereas it's quite easy to mix up, say, an Isle, a Don Quixote and Hamlet, I think um, for Jung, we looked at him, we thought he must be um, um, Essenin rather than um, Don Quixote, or he typed himself as a white logic oriented person, because that's in his own understanding, which isn't modern socionics or classical socionics. And the reason why we thought this was, there's a very clear focus, not necessarily on building a straightforward logical theory, but more analyzing and reflecting on his own dreams. And what are the meanings of his dreams? What are the, what is the underlying meaning towards the various superficial reality we, we live in. And eventually he put together this idea of these archetypes, this idea that all the different journeys, all the different actions we engage in in the world are part of carrying out certain heroic narratives. The idea of a hero going into the unknown, finding, um, well, finding something of value and bringing it back to the world of order, the world of the known and other examples of different archetypes and figures, certain trends appearing throughout our past, showing up and reoccurring in the present. But, and interesting, the psychological type is only a small, a, a small um, deviation in his overall interest in these archetypes and how they show in people in this very deep reflection. But when I look at that, this idea of a pursuit of sort of symbolic and archetypal meaning and significance, uh, coming out of um, just, just the everyday, looking far and beyond the everyday, I would have thought that would have been an overwhelming focus on white intuition as opposed to black intuition. And this, when you said it's because he's logic first, no, fair enough. I think logic first would cause someone to be more, very much more intellectually focused. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they'll take an approach to their logic of reflecting back on dreams looking for this deeper underlying meaning 
as opposed to just doing what Freud did, was just looking at some data and putting together, this is my structure, this is how it works, straightforward, no other way of thinking about it. Jung took a very different approach, despite also being logic-oriented in, in, in psychosophy. Uh, so what was it about Jung that you thought was more black intuition? Yes, when we typed him, we read his lectures, we read his legacy about interpretation of dreams, about archetypes, about psychological types as well. So he really had white intuition in his semantics, but it does not contradict with the type uh, Don Quixote because he had painful white ethics as a blind spot. So when we analyzed his uh, works, we've, we have found, especially in his letters, where, where he described his adventures, where he described his uh, travelings around the wild countries. Yeah. Uh, we, we found a lot of black ethics and white logics in description of his theories. Black. So he, and he was obviously intuitive, according to many typologies. Well, Don Quixote and Yesenin would probably be the same on that then, yeah. So we came out that, uh, and, and then uh, there is a popular version in old socionics, and it is quite widespread, that uh, Carl Gustav Jung was a Robespierre. When uh, we watched his interview, which he gave not long before his death in 1960, something like that, there is an interview on YouTube. He told about black sensory like it was not his painful function. So it is acceptable for Don Quixote because he has a third function, black sensory. And it is, it can be, it is possible. It could also be the suggestive function as well. At least, because that's not, again, not the uh, vulnerable function. Suggestive function, if yeah. we, if we suppose who, Balzac, for example. Okay. So what we described so far is someone with a balance of black ethics and white logic is clearly intuitive and also black sensation is not their vulnerable function yes that could there are two types that could be that could be do, um, don quixote that could also be essenium but it seems to me that the major point of contention is over white ethics and you and you found from his letters that was painful uh, if we suppose for example essenium yeah then he should be from club of humanitarian types ethics and intuition mm. uh, he has a book i don't know i don't remember the title where he described his work with his patients mm. uh, various patients came to him and described their dreams and the symbolism of their dreams and he described not his interaction with the patient he tried not to come into the nature of person like ethics do he just described the structure of dreams and the meaning of symbols. So he took every person like uh, like an inanimated object and just made it into pieces. It is a logical approach. So we do not see ethic intuitive inclination in his works. Despite he had much interested in spirituality, but it does not mean that uh, he had ethical type. We believe that he was uh, such a great, such a great investigator and researcher, and it is very, it is very natural to Don Quixote to make a absolutely new theory. The theory mm -hmm. of psychological types was really revolutionary in its time, and it still works. Although I know you've said in the past, Timur, and I agree with what you said early in the interactions that modern socionics should not be about dealing with stereotype should not be dealing with certain impressions so yes, yes uh, Don, Don Quixote do, do often create new theories I would also said that Essenin or the type is also very like to create new theories and also Robespierre I say they're probably the three most inclined to do it because they're all intuitive and they all have uh, white logic either leading creative or in the mobilizing which I think is a very strong like almost like a second motivation a motivation that can cause someone to want to appear intellectual want to appear logical and understand how things work we've, we've typed actually a few uh intellectual people as yesenin 
Um, these would have been uh, Friedrich Nietzsche. Um, yes. We also typed um, ooh, Hegel, uh, Karl Marx. We typed as an essay in. And Karl Marx, according to our theory, is unlikely. He was mo most likely he was a logic because his theory is too inanimated. His theory is too abstract and not suitable for real alive people. Oh, it was all about people. It was about. It, about, it, it was trying to appear economic as well, but it, he, it was all about you know how the working classes are being undermined by by the capitalists, and very much the idea that people and society must band together. We must try and bring about this new society, in, as in the um, Communist Manifesto, and he was very much about going around talking to people who he um who he thought he can then get involved in the system he relied on a very close relationship also quite a bit of white ethics with um engels and lived off him essentially marx had no desire to one work for himself and no desire to um create any sort of money beyond purely spreading his uh, spreading his belief in this uh, socialist system he lived in utter squalor not because he um, he didn't necessarily care for the um, the day to day details. He had a family. He built that up. But this idea that he's actually put aside your long term ideas, your sense of where society is going to go, your belief structures, put aside that and do something practical for once. He never did it, and there's no sign of any black air logic throughout of his in his writing. It's it's, it's setting out a theory of what is the correct way of doing um economics that benefits people but there isn't so any it's, it's very strange for intuitive ethical introvert mm. i think marx ideas mostly look like logic intuitive idea it's about mostly economy not the psychological internal world of people i think this is this is an interesting um difference i think we we've this is why we don't tend to use clubs so much we're aware of clubs they are important but i would expect there's always an exception to some of these rules we create the clubs can often vary so an lii for instance i would expect to out of all the nts all the researchers they should show perhaps the most white sensation i'd expect someone from um oh i said an ILE, on the other hand don quixote to show far more black ethics. It's quite possible that we have mistyped Salvador Dali. I'm quite open to that because I think that um, an ILE could look like a Hamlet because of the extroverted ethics. Yes. Um, that's why I'm not at the moment. I wouldn't, I wouldn't quickly go in and say, oh, I'm not sure I want to challenge you on Salvador Dali. So I think actually, no, I'm probably wrong here. I want to go back and take a look at him. When it comes to um, dealing with an Essenian, I think out of all the humanitarians, of all the intuitive ethical types, I feel there's one type that can easily be 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 um, confused for an NT, a, ra a researcher, purely because of their use of white logic. But if that's the case, what do you then do to make sure they're definitely a humanitarian, not a researcher? Well, if they're showing white logic, but they're not showing any black logic. And throughout their life, there's an ongoing, consistent um, repudiation of anything to do with black logic in their life. That would suggest to me that this is probably, uh, you know, um, an IEI, an SNN, but they've clearly developed into their mobilizing function to the point where it looks like they could even be strongly introverted logic, but there's no black logic to support it. And I think that's what makes something a strong use, a strong function is where you're using it, using one side of it, but you've also got the other helping you out. And that if you don't have the other side helping you out, then your your your, your usage of it is going to fail at some point. Es Esenin's use of introverted logic will have no sense of actual practicality. It won't show up in the, in the results, in the evidence. It won't be based on even looking at the evidence. Robert but it's very well. sorry sorry to interrupt on you but it's very strange for Yesenin, which has black logic as a painful function as a blind spot to yeah. write the 
theory about the proper structure of the economy? It is a fully black logic question, according to our method. Ah, that's the thing. This is what I said before about we shouldn't be focusing on stereotypes. Now, I would say that the economy can very easily be white logic as well. At the end of yes. the day, because the thing is, if we're doing, doing in terms of semantics, and we're not, and we're being, we're not just taking um, certain uh, stereotypes. I think it could be a stereotype about a certain field to say that is a black logic field. This is a white logic field. Yes, I think most of the time, someone who's looking at the travel of money and researching, okay, what tends to produce more money, what sorts of things create more wealth or less wealth. Yes, I say it's very much a black logic thing. And that's why I think lots of black logic people can be found in, in economics. But what about someone who approaches that field and instead says, I'm not going to be looking at what creates more money or less money. I'm going to look at what how people are being mistreated, how one class is bullying another class, and how that working class, it's none of their control. It's other people creating bad systems for them. And now I'm going to show how we're going to overturn the entire thing and write out our new principles for a complete change. It's not looking at the... It's not looking at the facts. It's not looking at the empirical data. It's not it's just a small step of abstraction above the same extroverted logic. It is the, an objective picture of economy. And, you know, we noticed that logic intuits tend to uh, sympathize and tend to uh, be very, uh, very interested in the theories that mm. are about the global justice. The ju uh, justified uh, spreading of uh, wealth. It is a question of logic and intuition. So communist and left ideas, they are mostly, mostly uh, connected with logics intuits, according to our... We have many here in Russia, we have many bloggers of logic intuitive types that are telling that only world socialist revolution will help. Oh, dear. Now, I, I mean, I can see so some of that. I can see some of that in Robespierre, like Noam Chomsky, as an example. Although I've often found with these more Robespierre uh, communists, or well, not com he's not a communist. He's uh, he's one of those um, left-wing libertarian uh, socialists, and his approach is very much. I think the revolution will happen without any violence. It will just work itself out. There's there, we don't need to be aggressive. No need to take action to make it happen. It's just the uh, the right thing, and I just need to make sure people know and understand better, and eventually society will work out that way. This is how I've seen the Robespierre's approach, um, that they're sort of so-called social, their bloodless so, um, socialist revolution. But if you look at Marx and look at the Communist Manifesto, it's very much about seizing the means of production. It's very much about taking an aggressive action to bring things about. It is a central quadra, definitely. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, it sounds more like a central quadra. Although Marx himself dedicated himself to, first of all, feeling that this is the one meaningful idea for him to be working on. Not, there's no exploration outside of it, very little of that. This is the one meaningful focus of my life. I must dedicate myself entirely to it. And I must make sure that everyone else gets on board with it. All the other socialists listen to me and what I'm talking about. And I've, uh, worked, I've shown how it all makes sense in my theory, even if there's no empirical data to support it whatsoever. And in the meantime, I'm going to absolutely ignore day-to-day -day life. Um, I, my, my family will live in squalor. I will depend on the support of, the, of people who agree with my ideas and who I've managed to form close relationships with to support me. So some white ethics there as well, quite a bit of white ethics, but not valued for its own sake. It's for the idea. It is a question if that was valid or not. So I, I, I didn't uh, type Karl Marx thoroughly, so I cannot tell definitely what type does he be belongs to. I only see on this level that it is unlikely Yesenin. Because you can compare with Nietzsche, because we agree that Nietzsche was Yesenin. It is yeah. a completely different uh, philosophical. He didn't have any philosophy. He just described human nature. His philosophy is very artistic i would say it's like a mm, artistic literature mostly let me just make sure my computer's plugged in properly I don't think it is. Hang on. okay there it's in now it's fine now something was it was just out better um 
no no fine i do think there is a certain clunkiness to to um marx's writings because i think ancient economics he wasn't he was talking about human morality our perceptions of reality and what the nature of man is i think well marx was trying to make an economic argument but i guess my major my, my main point is that i think any type can go into any field and try to make their point within that field and it's a question of how do they try to make that point within that field and to what point are they deviating from the norms and rules that someone in that field would normally be respecting you know, we see the tendency that uh, every famous person, if he is realized and famous in his own sphere, mm -hmm. has almost always uh, a harmony of this sphere with his psychological type. Because there are socionics, for example, here in Russia, that believe that every type can work and can achieve anything. And they even make an example that Yesenin can be a president, a CEO of international uh, financial network. I see that it's completely a ridiculous uh, supposition because we never saw th such Yesenin. If we have ethic and into it, he either will be a writer, an artist, a musician or something like that, but never a businessman, for example, because black logic is just, he's unable to do anything like in this field. Interesting. I mean, I would say, I would, I would say I wouldn't quite agree with that, but I, I, I get your point. I think that for instance, I would never say that an Essenin would climb up in a business financial environment by doing the businessy financially things in the way we do, would expect. Instead, let's say someone who, in this alien, who's attracted to the financial business environment because they like the sense of prestige it grants. They tend a prestigious area. They want to be uh, seen as uh, being part of that elite group. It's very strange that you say can have an incli inclination to such sphere. We have never seen that. Okay, okay, but let's keep on with this idea so let's say that they rose up not actually through their business acumen not through their working hard on the different facts and figures they actually did very little of that but they happened to be in this prestigious environment making the right friends charming the right people um and eventually they managed to because no one actually takes issue of them they're so un uh, controversial in their way of coming across to people they able to make everyone feel that they're agreeing with them and they're making the close relationships and contacts with right people they end up climbing up the social ladder within this financial it's, about, it's mostly about white ethics to make proper co connections with people and to climb the social ladder it's not about easy and then well, well no, i i would i would say that it's white ethics for a purpose other than white ethics it's not about actually protecting those relationships. And each point, they may be easy forgetting the person they just spoke to earlier on. They're not preserving any of that relationship. But what they are seeking is to be right at the top and for and the people actually see them as being the sort of glorified figure, seeing them as being, I am prestigious, I am living an elite existence. Which I would say is probably, probably more of a beta motivation living it sounds it sounds like you are describing a typical napoleon motivation not about his sin interesting because mm -hmm. to climb on the top through the proper relationships it's not a social program of his it's a black sensory and white ethics that's why they become politicians and businessmen most likely very often i actually don't know many napoleon uh, politicians now i think they were, they used to be, there used to be many um, Napoleon politicians, but I wouldn't say that they are necessarily the sort of charming figure. They are good at sort of, um, they have a charisma, a very motivating charisma, and they tend to be very good at winning elections because they're able to come across to other people as if they're talking to them on the one-to-one -one and cause them to warm up. It's like Franklin Dean Roosevelt and his uh, fireside chats. I think that was a, very good example of Napoleon working and making each person feel that they're being individually talked to. We didn't type him, so I cannot say uh, okay, exactly. 
I would have thought it was one, but that doesn't matter. Um, whereas instead, the approach where an Essanian may take, where it's sort of mixed up but differently, they, they don't come across as a particularly driving leader figure. They're not really taking the initiative. Instead, it's more that they're voted up to the top because no one takes issue with them. No one thinks that they're, they're an unpleasant person. They're able to manage their reputation quite well with each individual person. And it's not about standing up or protecting their loyalties. I think about Napoleon. Take Jacques Chirac as an example. He, one reason he hated Giscard d'Estaing, the French president, was because Giscard d'Estaing spoke in such a way of his predecessor, Pompidou, in France, essentially threw him under a bus. And Giscard d'Estaing didn't realize he was doing that. But Jacques Chirac saw that, say, you basically betrayed someone who it wasn't for him, you wouldn't have your career. So now I'm going to hate you. I'm going to hate you for your disloyalty towards other people who have done things for you. And we see that sort of harsh white ethics focus. But I'd say someone who's a, a, a particular kind of Yesenian who just wants to, say, reach a sort of idealized position. They, want, they may have a reason for, it, for doing it other than just being at the top. Fair enough. Maybe there's some sort of ideal. Maybe they want to save the environment. Maybe they want to um, just be live the life of a celebrity and have a, a, an esteemed existence like that. There, are, I think there are some. Once again, you are describing extroverted motivation. Yesenian has quite the opposite motivation. He wants to realize his own imagination, his own artistic vision, but not social success. It's about extroversion. I don't mean so much social success, but more the lifestyle of someone who is. Elite, who, who has some sort of more elite quality, an exclusive special belonging, a special belonging which other people aren't necessarily belonging to. It's not necessarily about being wealthy. It's not necessarily about being um, about actually achieving anything in a concrete materialistic way. You're right. I think there is some, I, I, I do think that's more of a typical Zhukov who wants to climb to the top in terms of actually being, you know, being the boss, being on top. It depends on the position of will, psychosophic, because there yeah. can be Zhukov just a soldier, for example, or yes. just just a security. Yes, no, no, fair enough, fair enough. I agree. I agree with the fact that not all Zhukovs want to climb to the top of, any, of everything, and that may, many of them pursue environments of thrill-based action, based on um, can be something of the same enforcement, something a bit more practical. It's fair enough. But still, this idea with I, I have difficulty seeing you saying as being just the idea of a poet, just being the lyricist, just being this sort of romanticized figure. I think it could show up in other ways. Do you, have you typed uh, Barack Obama? Mm, no, we haven't typed him. Okay. But we suppose that he's someone from extroverted intuitive types. Maybe Jack London, maybe Huxley, somebody from that. Interesting. OK, we, we, we typed him, you saying as an example. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But also, but here's the, but another one I had in mind was Emmanuel Macron. Emmanuel Macron? Mm, we haven't typed him definitely. Maybe Jack London. Maybe, but not, think, not definitely. A lot of people were saying Jack London. And the reason they're saying Jack London because he, he started off as an investment banker. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, but that's the thing. But if you look at how he's actually reached that point, he had a very sort of elitist education. And he, he realized this is an area where if you're going to become a politi politician and create change, you need to go into a prestigious environment. You have to climb to a top particular area like investment banking. He didn't necessarily do all the sort of the focus of money making, dealing with numbers and statistics. Instead, he was someone who was charismatic. People, people liked him. People did him favors. And when he was actually then running, he was able to, through very strong extroverted ethics, I'd say, give the impression of being um, anti-establishment, of being a fresh new face for France, despite the fact he came from all the elitist institutions which the French were trying, trying to get away from. In the way that the Barack Obama was able to portray himself as being this sort of slightly um, anti-establishment um, African-American figure, even though he was wa raised by uh, wealthy uh, white parents in America, and had a very um, high level education, had all those sorts of privileges. He was able to give the impression he was something different. And both of them have been charismatic leaders. Um, I say 
Barack Obama with, with more success, I'd say, than Emmanuel Macron, because Macron started to think, oh, the environment's very important. Um, and I think people will be on board with the idea of taxing you know, people more to protect the environment and all these other causes and uh, ideologies. And then people reacted poorly to it because actually that's not what we want. You're out of touch with us. But at least during the election, he had that ability to appear as something other than himself. And a very, what I think is a very skillful use of black ethics. But I don't know. I, I, I just, whenever someone says that people cannot succeed in certain fields, I say, ah, but there must be exceptions to this. And the question is why? And if I look, if I can look in within the field, a type within the field, and I can see that they're succeeding not due to the things you'd expect, but due to other reasons, that's when I think, ah, maybe they're a different type to the normal. Maybe they're a very unusual typing. Uh, another example, you know, you know, Steve Jobs. Now, people have often, the Myers-Briggs people typed him as an ISTP, which doesn't really mean very much. Um, now, but other very people, strange. Other people have typed Steve Jobs as a Jack London again. We oh, do. Oh, okay, fair enough. Now, well, I would say within this world of technology, what was he doing? He was almost a messianic figure. His, his, he, he's celebrated long after his death and because he created this image of this idea of making technology sexy, making it something which people can be, it go, can travel in impassioned groups to go and see the new show, the new thing he's gonna put on for people to entertain them. And he was so focused on image and branding and entertainment within the sphere of technology. He himself didn't actually get involved so much with the nuts and bolts of the technology. He had Steve Wozniak working more on that. So, and he had all the sort of temperaments of both Jack London and Hamlet in terms of being very sort of um, unstable in his energy levels. This sort of fierce temper could come out at times. He can often bully people under him. He had clear black intuition. A lot of a lot of creative new ideas and innovation in this field, but it seemed very much he wasn't focused on the black logic, but much more on the black ethics. What he organized he one of the most successful companies. He Hamlet did. just cannot do that in the, in such sphere. It's impossible. Hamlet is a humanitarian. He can be a politician, a writer, an actor, but not a businessman. But if he, but the question is, how did he organize that business? How does he do it? It How does not, it has no significant meaning because the sphere itself, it's not interesting for ethic into it. He would never go just in this sphere to make something out there. First of all, ethic and intuition and only then maybe business. For example, a Hamlet is, watch, is uh, uh, willing to create his own theater and make uh, some kind of business of this, but business is not the first place. But here is innovator in technology sphere. It's only Jack London. This type is absolute champion in such fields. Mark Zuckerberg, Pavel Durov, uh, okay. Steve Jobs. I, th I think I think Bill Gates is a very good example of a Jack. Yes, London. Bill Gates as well. Yeah. But but also it's interesting how Bill Gates he did it in that business minded way which you're talking about. That he is looking at the data, creating technology, continuously revising and making sure that technology works at the greatest optimum level. When he speaks in interviews, we see a very far more dry, fact-oriented way of communication. He's not showy. He doesn't show off his wealth. He doesn't create much of an image. He's just who he is. And he's given, and he's very focused on sort of ruthless takeovers of other businesses, buying things out, but very little time given towards brand and market creation. It's a nuance of behavior. It does not uh, change the picture in general. So these businessmen and these business, businessmen in high technology sphere, how do they behave in details? It depends on psychosophic uh, type, on their personal history and so on. But we see two main functions that were realized, logic and intuition. Would Other you, types are just, are just not competitive in this field. Would you have typed uh, Steve Jobs as maybe a Jack London with first emotions? No, no. He he's most likely had first will because of his very strong uh, and, uh, character, very so rude then, sometimes. So then how would you explain that 
overwhelming focus on brand of, of Apple being about its brand rather than the actual consistency and reliability of its technology. I would say that it is not strictly connected with socionic type because branding is a part of marketing and there are yeah. no better marketers than Black Logics. Yes, but, but, but what I mean is, yes, he was at the head of a business and technology, but his focus was so much on, and he was a marketeer. He was a an advertiser. It is a talent. It is a talent, marketing, yes. So it's, Mar it is not described by this or that socionic function. Mm. Okay, I don't know. I, I, well, I, I'm just get, I get the feeling that this is more of a sort of the, the sort of the, the stereotypical aspect of a field that it requires only certain types can compete there and be at the top. You know, the um, the reason and uh, yeah. the final conclusion they are not mixed here because we have typed many top businessmen and they all why <laughs> they they are Jack Londons. So we just make a conclusion that it is very likely. So Steve Jobs, we typed him by interview. We are not typing just because he's a businessman. No, fair enough. And what was it that he said that that showed to you the strong black logic and not black ethics? His interview was completely consisted for 90% from logic and white intuition. How he organized his business, what difficult did he have, how did it develop in time, what measures did he take to improve his business, what uh, he made with his company, how did he hire people, it, everything is objective logic. There's nothing that was connected with other functions. And he had low emotion, uh, according to Psychosophia, maybe third one, the vulnerable. So if when, even if we suppose, for example, Hamlet with low emotion, we typed such yeah, celebrity yeah. here in Russia not so long time ago, he is also involved in theater and art. So, he, so every type has very strict borders within his realization. And ethic intuits, especially from beta, they do not go in technologies. I have no such examples. I have never seen like that. But Huxley, for example, he is intuitive ethic types type, but he has black logic in his values. And for example, we type Richard Branson as Huxley. He made 300 businesses just through the relations with people. We typed him by his interview and he's very bright, intuitive, ethical type. I, I thought maybe uh, Hugo for Branson, but we haven't benchmarked him. So, but now I've been looking just because his the overwhelming amount of energy he puts into everything. And he is a will, will, emotion, physics, logic, in according to Psychosophy. He's a leader of first will, makes him very strong character. But Hugo does not have black logic, and Huxley has. It is a point of self-development uh, for him. It, it's, um, how much can the role also play, play a role? <laughs> role? Role function is not valuable, is the most important thing about it. Yeah. So people do not tend to realize themselves in role function. It is a, uh, it is an old statement yeah. here in Russian socionics. We also often asked about this role function, but we haven't seen any um, evidence that uh, this or that famous person realized and became famous according to his role function. It does not work like that. Hmm. Can okay, would you say that leading a country? But that also has a lots of black logic involved. So would you say from that that a Hamlet would not be able to become, say, a president? Uh, Adolf Hitler, for example, yeah. was a Hamlet. Yeah. He has black. He had black sensory as a value. It is a very strong argument, and he had first will. Okay. So, but but what I say is also running a country is like a business. There you got to think about how a country's being taxed, where's the money going, what is the economic system. There's lots there that's also to do with black logic. It, 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 that's why even taking, say, a, the Roman emperor would be like the CEO of a massive international company. I, I just wonder, what is it about the realm of politics here that mm -hmm. is so different from the realm of business? It's a very, very good question. You know, uh, if we take, for example, the history of my country, USSR, it was for the most of time 
it was held by ethics censorix and black censorix is much more important in holding uh, the country in our reality because black censorix helps to take the power the first and to take the control and the economy is left somewhere aside and we had very bad economy during the ussr yes no no fair enough i mean i would have i would have thought some of that was some more of an emphasis on white logic than black logic in the use of the economy that the economy must be run in this way because that those are the doctrines that we have we believe in rather than the economy should be run in this way because actually this works better and um i wonder that when it came to say gorbachev coming along we typed him uh, as a napoleon mm -hmm. we typed as dreiser but it's very close yeah because i think for him he was the one who was set, who rejected white logic and said actually what is working here let's try to change things up what are these people over in america are doing let's um have some more transparency and also transformation in our economy glasnost perestroika and he just opened things up to that change and had made stronger ethical relationships with others he was charismatic he was also very decisive but he allowed complete flexibility in terms of the structures or how things ought to be run and i thought it was that rejection of white logic which led to the change according to our method economy is a pure black logic issue and he just gave this issue to all his ministers that were responsible for economy and it, it all just ruined it uh, it only shows that he had very uh, poor and very weak black logic in both cases napoleon and dreiser they have weak black logic yeah they do they do especially i think um, napoleon can get better with more experience yes boris yeltsin according to our version was a napoleon after ah, that's interesting because i think boris yeltsin is quite similar to donald trump and we, we maybe type... donald trump is napoleon we we have oh. not decided finally yeah, fine because are we we type yeltsin as zhukov it's very close and we type we type trump as zhukov so there's consistency in what we're looking at we're just we're, we're interpreting it differently and that's mm. that's the thing i think our methodologies are quite good yes i'm wondering that the discussion we may need to have in the future because i don't want to just drop it here i think we need to have more discussions private okay. or because i'm i think it's a discussion of how we are then looking at this data and what we are assigning to it to make sense of it does that, does that looks sense? like it looks like i haven't managed to answer all your questions we have so many so many other questions that <laughs> made our our oh discussions two hours two, two, oh my goodness it's two hours oh bloody hell do you have strong white intuition <laughs> oh dear oh my goodness no, I, I began I, doubting in your type you know just now no, that's fine it's fine look i might just have been ignoring it <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Let's let's ask maybe a couple. I don't want to keep you too long. Maybe I should um let's see. Is there anything here that's a direct question to you? If not, I think we should stop. May we just uh answer other question another time? Yeah, I think that's a just, good idea. Just proceed because yeah. we have many things to discuss, as it turned out. Indeed. <laughs> now I don't think there's any direct questions here. Not that I can see. What type is Timur? Um so Timur, you type yourself as Maxim, don't you? Yes. And I think Maxim makes sense. But yeah, I, I haven't think. typed, but I wasn't typed by your methodology or no. you just see. No, I can just see. I can okay. just see. Um, there's a firmness in how you respond to uh, questions and criticism. You have, you're not very emotionally animate. Very, things are quite straightforward, quite controlled. Um, I know your initial reaction on your YouTube channel when I was prodding was very Maxim. We're not having this in the channel. You keep this up, get out. You'll be out. It's, it's my first logic. Yeah, 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 first logic, but bolstered by some black sensation. Oh, oh yes. first in uh, in so so Sophie. No, fair enough. Um, no, no, I, I think I think you are you, you are Maxim. I think you are Maxim, who also has opens to some nuance in your methodology and how you work it, which. I think it's an, someone who's also quite intelligent and the maxim i think that's yeah um any other questions here if someone said you may be a jukov but i can't see jukov 
It's a close version. It's okay. You know, I have collected 12 versions of my subsonic type over the years that I'm involved in this topic. So it's very fun. I'm typed in Dostoevsky, in Zhukov, anyone. <laughs> but also find myself with you. Not with some people, I often go on this sort of, um, I, I can tell them steamroll them. But with you, I'm sort of finding different questions. I'm putting on more black intuition even than normal because I feel that you're quite you're quite solid in what your views are and what you fought out and what the evidence you said shows. And for me, I'm sort of asking questions around that to see what how things can vary. I feel myself taking a more of a questioning position even than normal. Whereas when with someone who seems very sort of shaky and unsure, I then feel I have to provide direction. So for once, I don't feel like I have to provide straightforward direction. Um, so this is another reason I think Maxim makes more sense. Um, yeah, that's basically NYC agrees. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, Fate thinks you may be ILI. I mean, when I first saw you online, I thought you were either a Balzac or a, or a Maxim, but I think over time, Maxim became more clear. Um, yeah. Okay. Timur, thank you so much for coming on tonight. Thank I'm sorry you so much. Longer than for you. are very polite for not letting me know until later. Um, it was and interesting. I could not just stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. It was interesting. That's good. I think we should have more because, look, there is clear potential here. There really is. I think it's a question of having these discussions and working it out. I think there is there is, there's more to explore in terms of club and the role of mobilizing function, in terms of psychosophy and its relationship with um, socioeconomics. At the moment, I'm not in. I know we. Were, I thought we were going to have more discussion about how socionics does interact with behavior and what the exact differences are we can have that another time yes. but i think we've covered some really good ground today and yeah i don't want it to be a one-off at least i think there's more to discuss and i think it'll be interesting for people okay i'm yeah. ready okay take care timor have a lovely rest of your day and thank you for coming on and thank you to everyone thank else you. For watching thank bye. you bye